So, welcome back. I've just been doing my first video and I turn around and there's the dog sitting in my sewing room, sound asleep in the back of my video. How embarrassing. Anyway, I'm going to run with it and show you why the dog's in my sewing room. She wants her new bed made. And of course, coronavirus, you get all these things done, don't you? So here, here it is, a video on how to make a dog bed. Here's the old dog bed, which lasted a good three, maybe four years. So here's the new bed, frame, ready to go. And a bit of shade cloth that I found out the back in the shed. So here's how you make a new bed for your dog. So we need to measure our size of our dog bed. Everyone's got a tape measure handy, but this one's only 150 centimetres long. What do we do? Simple. Here's one I prepared earlier. Stick two together and then it gives you three metres of dog bed. Okay. Wrap it around the bottom. What we need to do is have an actual casing of bed so that you can thread the legs through. So we've got 150. 80 is going to be the length around of our dog bed. And then the other side, 230 by, ooh, this one's very close to 150. Twist it. 230 by 158 plus seams. Here, here's how to work it out. I've come to a bit of a standstill here. Unfortunately, this little poochie's decided to come in and help me. So I'm going to have to maybe move her out to another bed. Right, never use your good dressmaking scissors. Good dressmaking scissors, shade cloth, don't go. Don't waste your scissors. It's a waste of time, okay? You'll cry. Cheap kitchen scissors. Whatever you've got, use on shade cloth, okay? Because it's really harsh on your scissors, all right? So we had 230 as our length. I work in centimetres, some people work in inches. I'm doing this on the floor because it's from the garden and it's covered in dust and whatnot, so I'm not going to put all over my nice clean table. So I've got 115 here, and I'm going to add a couple of centimetres length for uh, seam allowances. Excuse me, Preachy. She's just loving the coronavirus. Okay, and we've got enough this way, 158, which is basically 160, half of that's 80, so we've got 80 wide here, plus plenty of seam allowance on each side, I've got probably two or three centimetres seam allowance on each side, so that's fine, and we've got double the thickness because we've got to fold down this end, okay? At this end, we need like a 10 centimetre at least gap so that we can fold that back over and stitch it back together, alright? So... I know that that's my right measurement, so I'm going to give it maybe 15 centimetres because I've got the spare shade cloth. And then I'm just going to cut straight on the floor. Watch that you don't cut your carpet, of course. Watch that you don't cut your dogs. And I'm going to have to ask you to move. No, I'm going to cut your nose. Out of the way. Out of the way. Good dog. Out of the way. Good girl. Oh. Off you go. On your bed. Right. So it's cut. And we're... We're ready to sew. I'll just clear the dog out. <laughs> so, here we are. Dog bed, cut, folded, ready to go. I've switched to my industrial machine, which is way more faster. Don't expect you to run out and buy one. I absolutely love it and it sews anything. You can put a heavier thread on if you would like to, because you're stitching shade cloth. You can put two lots of thread through and that will be a much firmer stitch to hold your dog bed in place. You can also change your needle to have a much heavier needle, like a, at least a 100 or maybe a 120 needle as opposed to a 70 or 80, which would be your normally normal stitching. Okay, so we've got the fold edge to the top here and we've cut with our kitchen scissors, not our good scissors, about eight centimetres, a little split in the top. And what we're gonna do is neaten that edge to the outside uh, and then we're gonna sew our seam, okay? So it's just, a split and we're just going to fold it over and neaten it and neaten around the curve and then neaten around the other side. Okay, here we go. Start with a back tack. Just 
watch that it's stitching properly and it's going through all of your layers, okay? It doesn't have to be perfectly neat, it's a dog, okay? And a dog bed. You can put some fancy stitches on later if we've got time. It's just one of those things that's been wanting to be done for a long time. But all that we're doing is just neatening off the edge so they can't fray, all right? Fold it back together and then we can stitch our seam down this side. So I've got about five centimetres in total to spare, or two inches. So I'm going to come in about two centimetres. Do it back tack a couple of times over because that's the end of your dog bed, okay? Before you go ahead, you should really check to see there's no holes in either side of your shaving block. You should do that before you cut it out. I've already checked mine. There's the odd hole along the side, which isn't going to affect it too much, okay? So down the side, keeping your hands out of the way. Now you can see why I like this machine so much. It's nice and fast. So is anything and everything. Even a dog bed. Have a sewing machine, we'll sew. To our other end, where we've got our lip that's going to fold over like an envelope for the end of our bed, okay? So we might just come down and allow another eight centimetres or ten, ten centimetres to be safe. Do a couple of back tucks because that's got a hold. And you've got about a ten centimetre on this side and probably about a twenty something centimetre on that side. And that's going to be your other opening at the other end, okay? So we can do... One on that side to neaten, and one on this side to neaten, okay? I'm just gonna fold it over so that I've got my right side to the inside of my envelope, my dog bed. Fold it over, tucking all those raw edges in. You can have matching thread if you like. Or you can have contrast thread. I've gone for a contrast white today on my green. I don't think anyone's going to come over and say, Margo, I don't think your thread matches on your dog's bed. If you're doing it on a dress or something really nice for yourself or your family, then you might have matching thread. Okay. We need to do the other side. So I'm sewing down the second side of my dog bed and I've just got to measure as we go so that it's not going to be too thin because we wouldn't want to have to unpick and make it a little bit wider. Would we? So I'll just come down here making sure that it's coming into that uh, 160, 158 side. Oh, oh, grass clippings and all sorts of stuff all over this. I'm going to have to clean my machine at the end of it. Make sure it's the right measurement so that it's going to fit over the rack. Nothing worse if it doesn't fit. Very disappointed dog on my hands. <laughs> now, just need to fold back our edges like we have on all the other corners. So we have a huge green envelope with one leg opening at this end, a fold, one leg opening at that end, stitching on both sides, and then an open end at this side. So we need to just fold over and double neaten the edges so that they can't fray and fall apart, okay? Just gonna do each side with the uh, magic of TV. I'll be back in a moment. Now, as it turns out, as I was stitching along my neatening of the top edge, I broke a needle. So always good to have a pair of sunny glasses on when you're sewing. Um, so for that reason, if a needle does break, it doesn't uh, flick up and hit you. So we have one giant shade sail transformed into a dog bed with a fold across the top, seams down the side, little leg openings either side. Now we just need to turn it in the right way. 
or you seen it on the inside. It's a bit tricky because it's very large, a bit dusty, and quite uh, tricky to turn inside out. Then we just have to thread it onto the dog bed. Right. So here's our dog bed. Uh, we need to do this so that the top higher edge of our two edges is over the top of the bed because that will encase the other side and then we're going to stitch it by hand unless you can get under your machine. So we just need to thread both sides on to the frame which is easier with two or more people otherwise you just need a spare set of hands. Just need to thread it on and through because it's one big pocket. Have to have it even, otherwise one time we'll be tapping on the other. Problem number 57. Dog has installed herself on her new bed while I was trying to put the cover on. So we'll get back to this in a moment. Thanks for your patience. Quick, while well, the dog's not watching. I've got the dog bed back. Right, so we've pulled up our bottom layer. Oh, there she comes. She's saying, what are you doing? Up as far as we can go. You've got to really pull that one up high. And then you've got to fold this top layer over. Now what I like to do is tuck these corners in. Just fold that one over again. And then I'm going to try and pull it up and pin it at the same time with my huge big fat pin. And hold it and video all at the same time. So I'll go and pin it along and then I'll come back and really tighten it fast so that you don't get any sag in your dog, dog bed. Otherwise, your dog will be on the floor in no time. And the idea is to be off the floor. Oh, I'll get right back to you. Just adding while I remember. No animals have been harmed while making this video. So we have our dog bed pinned nicely. I've just got it leaning up against the table so I can show you as I go. What I'm using to stitch this bed together is actually kitchen string. You can buy it at the supermarket. It's quite thin, it's a couple of dollars Australian. And what we're going to do is a stitch cross. I'll show you a photo of the last bed that I did that I actually did different stitches, but this time we'll do something interesting. And maybe something a little bit fancy to make a bit of a feature out of it. So we're going to do little crosses as we go across, like a little cross stitch. don't know if you ever did any of that when you were younger. I'm just going to reinforce the first stitch. Find the biggest needle that you can to make life a lot easier. And if you do it standing up, then you don't have to worry about groveling around on the floor again. And then you can reach from both sides if you lay your dog bed up against the table, right? But the trick is to get it nice and tight. Watch you don't poke your hands as you do it. Nice and tight as you go. And what we might do is a nice little cross stitch and make our little pooch or our big pooch as the case may be in our house to be nice and fashionable with quite a nice little cross stitch pattern going across. And then we might give it a gap of that much again and then just hold it in place. Don't stress too much if it's not perfectly neat because I think we have a very lucky pooch. Okay. You might want to use a thimble to push the thread through as you go. And then you won't uh, stab yourself with your very sharp needle. Now I've just got about halfway across on my stitching. And I'm just going to show you how to tuck your needle in and actually pull it 
really tight on each stitch because it does get a little bit loose as you're going. So pull it from behind on your fabulous new cross stitch, just with your fingers, looping it up. And you can see from the front how it gets a little bit tighter, just to really keep that nice and firm so your dog bed's not going to sag too much. Then I'll keep going. Then just pull it again, I'm about halfway along. Make it nice and tight, every little stitch. As tight as your fingers can go. Because you want that super firm. And so the outside's now totally stitched. You can see the inside doesn't need to be perfect. And I've just made sure I've gone over and over and over a few times and then I'll just trim off the excess. One thing to note is when you've pinned your dog bed, don't leave it lying around in case your dog goes and jumps on it and it's got pins on it or a child or toddler or baby. Uh, so now we have a bed ready to go. Let's try it for the pooch. What do we think? Do we like it? It's all finished. Oh, on your bed, pooch. Oh, that's pretty good. Do you like it? What do you think? Oh yeah, and the tail's going, you're going to sit down? 